that we could do, 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 to reach God. But he said, I want you to sit down from doing, and I want you to be. We're human beings, right? Not human doings. But so often, we sit and we ponder on and we take time with and we struggle with and we wrestle with and we become overwhelmed with all the things that we're trying to do that we forget to be. We forget to be still in the presence of God. We forget to receive the love and the anointing and the forgiveness and the help and the strength of God because we're so busy working for him. And he said, work with me. We're too busy working for him. And he says, work with me. The unforced rhythms of grace. Where you are weak, I am strong. I am your father. I am your king. I am your way maker. I'm the lifter of a bow down head. I'm near to the broken hearted. I'm your deliverer. I'm your help. I am your God. That's who he is to us. But have we made him that? It's truly the question. So when he was dealing with me on being a sanctuary, I'm a teacher by nature, so I had to go find a definition. <laughs> the definition that I found, there was a few. It says a place of refuge or safety. A sanctuary is a place of refuge or safety. I have to think about it like this. When you come to church, you don't let anything just go down in your church. You don't just come in here saying whatever, looking whatever way, having your way, making joke, having any kind of conversation, usually, even those who are not saved, usually when they come into the sanctuary, there's some honor there, right? There's a bit of reservation there. There's something that they understand is holy and sacred about the place. Am I right? A sanctuary. You. Somebody say, I am God's sanctuary. Think about that. A place of refuge or safety. Psalms 91 tells me that he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Right? He is our refuge and our strength. He is our hiding place. He is our strong tower. Right? He is our safety. Right? He keeps us from harm. Right? That's what a sanctuary is. And that's what God calls you. His sanctuary. A place of refuge or safety. Another definition says a holy place. Somebody say a holy place. place. I love that word holy because the Bible says be holy for I am holy. There's a demand on our lives to be holy because God is holy. And if we are made in his image and in his likeness, it will behoove us to look like our father. It will behoove us to have his characteristics. It will behoove us to love how he loves and hate what he hates. So we can perpetually be in love with him. Yeah. I don't want the kind of relationship with God where work. I'm doing one thing just so he can get something and not done with it. No. I want to continue a perpetual thing with him. And that's what he requires of us. That's what he requires of us. A holy place. When I look at definition of us, you can go deep, deep, deep in these definitions. <laughs> one thing leads to another thing leads to another thing. And that's our study. Okay, I love it. Because what how many of you know that once you get a revelation, it can't be taken from you? Information can come and go, but a revelation stays with you. And that's what I want from God, a revelation. A holy place means to be dedicated. Somebody say dedicated. 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 A sanctuary is a holy place. It's dedicated, which lets me know that it's for a specific thing. Because when something is dedicated, that means that everything and everybody does not have access to it. It means that it's set aside for a specific purpose and it has a purpose and a mission to carry out. Somebody say dedicated. I am a sanctuary. How hey, y'all get that on the screen so fast? Come on down today. All right. That's what we're talking about. That's all right with me. Another definition says a consecrated place. Somebody say consecrated. I love that word. Mm -hmm. A consecrated place means a place that is prepared. And a place that is purified. Here's one thing that I love about God. He's a God that prepares for us. (laughs) Nothing is by chance. Nothing is by happenstance. Guess what? Everything, 
I learned this. It's a revelation. Everything that God is going to do has already been done. It has. He's not doing anything new. His work was finished on the cross. My God. I mean, that's something I'm still trying to work through when I go through things. Okay, you said it was already finished. It's finished. It is finished. It's a finished work. Okay, so now I need to walk in that thing. So the problem is, I don't believe it. The problem is, I don't know what you promised me. The problem is, I haven't grasped a hold of the truth of what you have said, Lord God. So I need you to help my unbelief. Because you call me a sanctuary. I'm a, a consecrated place. I'm dedicated to you, Lord God. I'm dedicated to you, Lord God. Everything that you have already planned for me is just working backwards at this point. Let be done on earth what is in heaven. We have to learn how to agree with God. Yeah. Agree with God. God, what have you spoken? Instead of me trying to come up with something new, ain't nothing new under the sun, it says in Ecclesiastes. It's nothing new. So God is making us a consecrated place, set aside, prepared for, and purified. Somebody say purified. Yeah. Now here's the deal. When something is purified, that means that all the residue is gone. Yeah. That means that any sediment that may have been up in that thing is no longer a part of the full mix. It's set aside somewhere so that the purity of the thing can be consumed. I need a pure sanctuary. Because don't forget we're talking about us. We need a pure sanctuary. I was thinking about this. So you know how early we was talking about how the house of God is a consecrated place, a holy place, a dedicated place, and certain things we just ain't gonna do in the church, right? So why can't we do them outside the church? Why is that okay? If God is everywhere, if he's omniscient, if he's omnipresent, if he's omnipotent, if he's holy, if he wants what's pure, then why is what I say I can't do in the church okay for me to do outside of the house? If I'm his sanctuary, if I'm his sanctuary, and, and that's, hey, I'm just, these are things that I think about. And you know, I love God because when he gives me something to share, he got to deal with me first. So then I'm like, okay, God, so then what is it that I say is okay here, but it's not okay here? Help me in that area. Because I'm human and I struggle, but I want to look like you, God. I want the aroma yeah. of Christ on me. That when I walk in the room, that people know that something yeah. is different about me. People understand that there's a light, God, and they're drawn to it, and I know that's you. So whatever it is that dims the light, God, remove it in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Every piece of residue, God, take it away. Give me a clear vision, God. Give me a clear sight, Father God. Help me to walk the straight and the narrow. Help me to walk in the way of the Lord. I don't want to be cynical. I don't want to be this way and that way. I don't want to be fake. I don't want to be one way on social media and then you meet me in person and oh, she got a nasty attitude. What's she doing that right? I don't want to be that way. Help us. Help us, God. Because I'm a sanctuary. I'm a sanctuary. And if God is before me, if he's with me, if he's behind me, if he's in me, then I need to be set apart. No matter
refuge or safety. Yeah. Which means that you have to be a safe place. Yeah. For others. Yes, ma'am. You have to be the one. And I know that's a lot of pressure. Trust me, I know. But if you don't do it, who else is going to go to? Come on. Come on. And what's going to be the result if it's not the child of God? Yeah. If it's not the light? Yeah. If it's not the city set on the hill? Yeah. Who else is going to go to? Yeah. Come on. We got to take up the mantle. Because I am the sanctuary. Glory be to God. Now, you, you are, and you are. <laughs> I ain't even got to meet yet. So here is another thing I found. I found a legal definition, which is so interesting because, you know, I like watching the TV shows with the, the lawyers and the police officers and the medical team. I, I love that stuff. I watch it, watch it, watch it, watch it. She and so does. I came across this legal definition for sanctuary, and I'm going to read it. It says, a consecrated place which has certain privileges annexed to it and to which offenders were accustomed to resort uh -huh. for refuge because they could not be arrested there, Come on. nor the laws be executed. Mm, that's true. That thing hit me. <laughs> yeah. Okay, the word privileges, there's something that comes along with me being a sanctuary. That's number one. Number two, it says that offenders were accustomed to resort there. So those who were in trouble, those who were in need, those who needed assistance, those who were down and out, those who didn't know God, they had a place to come to, yeah. to get to find him, right? Yeah. It says, nor the law executed. So the law, which we're under grace, the law cannot hold me down because I have the grace, the love, the purpose, and the help of God. Yeah. I have the Holy Spirit. Yeah. You know, one thing about the Old Testament, he, he came upon them, but he wasn't living in them. And we have the privilege, because we're the sanctuary of God, for the Holy Spirit to live on the inside of us. What kind of help is that? What kind of help is that? What kind of assurance, blessed assurance is that? And I think we forget that because you talk about walking in the authority of God. If you remember who you are, if you remember that the Holy Spirit lives on the inside of you, and he's the only one that knows the hearts and the thoughts of God, and so I can Provider. Don't forget that I'm the one who sustains you. Don't forget. 
sanctuary, there should be love. In God's sanctuary, there should be a flow of the Spirit. In God's sanctuary, there should be life and life everlasting, speaking life over and into and for. In God's sanctuary, there should be safety. There should be peace. In God's sanctuary, there should be rest. This hustle mentality that we have consumed ourselves with have taken away the grace of God from our lives. And we're wearing Salve! 
salvation. I love it when you show yourself. Invigorate my soul so I can praise you well. Yeah. My desire is to praise you, God. And I always got it in me to know how to do it well. So help me yeah. give you what you deserve. Yeah. Help me to give it to you the way that you desire it. Yeah. Help me to do that because in my own strength, I cannot. Yeah. I cannot. Yeah. It says, use your decrees to put iron in my soul. And should I wander off like a lost sheep, seek me out. <laughs> if I'm going to wonder Because them sheep be doing some things yeah. If I'm going which, by, by my way which way Come seek me out God Don't leave me out there Amen. It says I'll recognize the sound of your voice mm. Because we are his sheep He is our shepherd And the voice of a stranger we shall not follow The Bible tells us God if you just call out to me I'm going to recognize you When I pray I always pray, God, your voice be louder than all others. Yeah. Matter of fact, close my ear to any other voice but yours. I don't want to be influenced by any other voice. Nothing but you. Purity we talked about in the sanctuary. Sanctuary belongs to God. The sanctuary is the place for him to dwell and for him to speak, for him to share himself. I heard another thing this weekend that blessed me. It says that God is so kind. And he's so loving that he gave us the Bible to get to know him. Amen. Here we are thinking it's just a thing we have to follow. Rule, 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 rule. Thou shalt not be out here messing up. And really the Bible is to give us an idea of his heart. Yes. An idea of his character. Yes. An idea of his faithfulness. Yes. An idea of how he loves his own. Yes. I love that about God. He's always thinking about us. And we ought to be thinking about him always. A woman who wants more. These passages tell me a woman who wants more safety, protection, help, guidance, deliverance, answers, understanding, God's way, redemption. When Pam was up here, she started out, not the stuff, the stuff is great. And sometimes when we get these prophetic words, it's always about the stuff. But glory be to God for the stuff. But how you going to manage the stuff if you ain't right as a person? Yeah. How you want to be a good steward? How you want to be a sower and a reaper? Yeah. How you want to be a generous, cheerful giver? How you want to be a leader who stores people well? Yeah. How are you going to be a, a safe haven of a sanctuary? Yeah. If all your focus is on the stuff. Yeah. I'm here to talk to you tonight about more of God. A woman who wants more, she wants God as the head, yeah. which is a position. Yeah. She puts God in his rightful place. Yeah. A woman who wants more wants Jesus as the center from which everything else flows. And she knows that, right? That's your focus. A woman who wants more wants the Holy Spirit inside. That's your God. So you got God the Father as the head, the position. You've got Jesus as the center, which is your focus. And you've got the Holy Spirit inside, which is your God. You're not alone. You have divine help. If you really want more, put them in their rightful place and see them in your wellspring. See don't your life increase. I am a living witness. I am a living witness. Now here, if you're a note taker, <laughs> you ain't took nothing yet. <laughs> I got just a few more things. <laughs> a woman who wants more. Uh -huh. Let me get it. I don't need it. It's like this. You have to stop. <laughs> Number one. A woman who wants more, she wants to seek God. She wants to seek God. Jeremiah 29, 11 through 13. If you want to turn, you can, but I also highlighted them so I can read them to you. Somewhere. Here we go. <laughs> for I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. In those days, when you pray, I will listen. 
if you look for me wholeheartedly, you will find me. Mm. I love that. If you look for me, you will find me. So a woman who wants more of God is going to seek him. She's going to search for him. She's going to look for him so that she can get more, right? Those who seek God, find him. The Lord is good to those who hope in him, who seek him, Lamentations 325 tells us. Number two, a woman who wants more wants to know God. She wants to know God. 1 John 4, 1 John 4, 7 through 10. Hold on, y'all got a lot of homies in mind. 1 John 4, 7 through 10. This is the easy breathing version. It says, my friends, we should all love each other. It is God who makes us able to love other people. Yeah. Everyone who loves other people has become a child of God. That person knows God. Yeah. Did we get that? Uh -huh. It is God who makes us able to love other people. Everyone who loves other people has become a child of God. That person knows God. Yeah. If you're a person who does not love other people, you do not know God. Mm. It's just what it says. Mm. Anyone who does not love other people does not. It says right there. <laughs> This is how God showed that he loves us. He sent his only son to come and live in the world. Uh -huh. He did that so that we can have true life with God because of his son. Yeah. This shows what love is. It is not that we have loved God, but that he loved us. You got to know that about him. That's right. He loved us. He loved us so much that he sent his son to save us from sin. He sent Jesus to die as a sacrifice, to take the punishment for our sins. Yeah. One thing that I have learned in reading the Bible, it'd be a lot to take in, right? But one thing that helps me to read the Bible is looking for the character of God in whatever I'm reading. Yeah. Yes, there's a lot of quotables, there's a lot of memorization, there's a lot of stories, a lot of passages, a lot of history. But in all of that, who is God in that passage? Who was he to that group of people or that person? How did he show up for them? How did he teach them? How did he course correct them? How did he pour into them? What did he pull out of them? This is essential for us to know if we really want to know God. Yeah. Who is he in all the things that we read? Yeah. Yeah. What's his character trait? Yeah. So if you haven't read the Bible like that, I want to encourage you to do that. God is love and he proves it by sending Jesus. God's character is it's ours. It's evident and it's ours. And ours should be evident like his. The fruit of the spirit, right? Galatians 5. Yeah. Number three. A woman who wants more wants to love God. Mm -hmm. She wants to love God. So John 14, verse 15 through, no, that's right, I'm sorry. Oh, no, that's right. Love, love to God is expressed in obedience to God's commandments. Right. He offers us the help of the Holy Spirit to accomplish this. Uh -huh. The only way I can love God is with God. Right. Yeah. And I think many people are trying to love him without his help. And that's not true love. That's, that's a form of love. That's good. Right. A form of, I don't even know if it's love, honestly, to consider that. Because what is it grounded on? Yeah. What is its foundation? Yeah. To love God, we need God's help. And that should free some of us because we mess up, right? All fall short of the glory of God. If I mess up, I need to run to him for help. I need to run to him for cleansing. I need to run to him for answers. I need to run to him for instruction. I can even run to him for correction. Yeah. Because the Bible is given for instruction and rebuke, right? That's right. That's I need right. to learn how to run to him for all of that because he is my father. That's right. And a father wouldn't be a father if they did not correct you. Yeah. You can't get all the treats and not have the vegetables. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Number four. Yeah. A woman who wants more wants to include God. Somebody say include him. Matthew 6, 33. Y'all yeah. know that? Yeah. What is that? <laughs> <laughs> Instead, always think about the things that are important in the kingdom of God. Always do what God shows you is right. Then he will also give you the things that you need each day. That's right. We're trying to get the things we need each day, but we forgot to do the first part. Yeah. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. His righteousness, which is right standing. Yeah. Come on. Mm -hmm. 
We got to seek him first, the kingdom of God, and all his righteousness. Then everything else is going to be added. So we need to include God. Putting God first opens the door to all that he has to offer. Sis came up, Pastor came up and talked about open doors. More doors, you see. The doors, the more doors comes after we commune with him and include him in what it is that we've been thinking about. So he can give us his perspective on the matter. He knows best because remember, he's already prepared. Proverbs 16, 3. Commit your works to the Lord and it'll be established. Right. Include him. Yeah. Colossians 3, 1 through 4. I died with Christ yeah. and I live with Christ. Yeah. I need to remember that. My will died yeah. on the cross. When Jesus rose from the dead, I became saved. I got baptized. I said, all right, now is your will your way, God. Whatever that looks like, I'm riding with you. Yeah. Include him. Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ. And a lot of times we use that scripture just for anything, but if you read it in context, Paul's talking about the difficulties of life. I can do all of these hard things. I can go to prison. I can have much. I can have little. I can face all of these haters. I can do all of that through Christ who strengthens me. So we're talking about endurance. You want more of God, then you need to learn how to endure and long suffer. And stop giving up. And everything that comes your way, and everything that's unfavorable, but everything that don't look like how you want it to look. Somebody say endure. Endure. He's a good soldier, the Bible tells us. This is the fruit of the spirit. Okay? Number five. Almost there. A woman who wants more wants to serve God. Colossians 3, 23 to 24. Hold on, real quick. Colossians 3. That's not the one I need. Hold on, y'all. I'm sorry. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Please, God. Colossians 3, 23 through 24. It says, hold on, let me change the version of the message. Put everything together. You don't know what verse you want when you're in there. <laughs> <laughs> Am I right? <laughs> yeah. Thank y'all for bringing with me. These nails ain't it. <laughs> girl, I'm trying. <laughs> Colossians 3. 23 to 24. It says, work willingly at whatever you do as though you were working for the Lord rather than for people. Remember that the Lord will give you an inheritance as your reward and that the master you are serving is Christ. I think that's a great reminder. Yeah. Because if I'm a woman who wants more, then I need to learn how to serve the God of more. Yeah. I need to learn how to give my life back to him. I like to call it a life poured out. Sis, pour it out today. Sis, pour it out today. Yeah. Pastor, pour it out today. Sis, pour it out and give to God. You give your life back. And when you give your life back, God multiplies it. Yeah. Because he's a God of multiplication. Yeah. And because he loves you so much, he's not going to leave you with a little bit. 
to be a sanctuary of God. Yeah. Yeah. Not a sanctuary for idols. Yeah. Cleanse me, God. Yeah. Purify me, God. Yeah. My sole purpose is to serve you. My sole purpose is to worship you. Yeah. You know, when God delivered the children of Israel out of Egypt, uh -huh. that was why he let them go. Uh -huh. So they can worship me. The Bible says so my people can worship me. Yeah. That was the whole purpose of why they could have stayed there with that bread they wanted. Uh -huh. They could have stayed there with that little barley and that little flour. Yeah. But God said, I want my people to be free, yeah. free. to worship me. So a woman who wants more is free to worship. She freely serves. She serves in her local ministry. She's not just in the marketplace and leading church out of it. She sees where can my hands help? Where can my knowledge help? Where can my skill self help? Who needs me right now? What can I do to help you? That's a woman who wants more of God. She gives of herself freely and she serves God. Everything that she does is as unto the Lord. It's her to come. Amen. Romans 12 1 says, to be a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable for worship. Yeah. Yeah. Your life, is your life worship? Is your daily life worship or is it just a set time on Sunday or this Friday night? When other people are around and you can, they can see you. Hallelujah. Amen. Or are you at home, posture? Putting your king as your king. Spending time with him and letting him know how awesome and wonderful he is. I call it bragging on God. How often do you brag on him to him? God, you're wonderful. You're excellent. You are faithful, God. You love me so good, better than I can even love myself. God, you're trustworthy. You're strong. You're mighty in battle, God. You are all-knowing and all-wise. Yeah. God, you're a great father. Yeah. You know all things. all things. Nothing is hidden from you. Yeah. Nothing catches you by surprise, Lord God. Who is this great God? King of kings. Lord of lords. Lion in the lake. Hallelujah. God, you are a deliverer. You're a helper. You're a strengthener, Lord God. You come It's how I'm a safe place with you. 
says in 2 Timothy 4 2, preach the word of God. Yeah, yeah. All of us. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta be up here doing it. That's right. That's right. But your life should be doing that. Right. Preach the word of God, but you gotta know it. Let's let's start off. You got to go in the Bible. <laughs> But what she and I understood is that we're both women of God. Yeah. 
we're both daughters, and we knew that the relationship was going to be fruitful. So one thing we had to do to keep that thing strong was to remember, I'm not out to get you. That's right. That's right. I'm not out to harm you. That's I'm right. not out to replace you. That's I'm here right. to love you. That's right. That's right. And I know that God lives in you, and he lives in me, so yeah. let's work this thing out. Yeah. That is what helped us. Yeah. Right? So you have to know who God is. Who he, you you got to know what's true about that person, about, that God, about your God. Know what's true even when all else looks like it's not. God, you are my choice. Hallelujah. You're not forced on me. Amen. You are my choice. Somebody say choice. God, you are my reward. All that I could ever want really is found in you. You're not a consolation prize. You're the reward. You're the first, the head, the only. Glory be to God. You are my treasure. All of who I am, all of my riches, everything that I can give is found in you. I'm opening up the treasure chest and saying, God, what would you have me to, to invest today? That's another thing I'd like to share. Is I'm not here to spend my life. I'm here to invest in my life. There's a difference. When you spend, your money just gone. Yeah, yeah. But when you invest, there's a return on that investment. And God expects a return on his investment. You're his sanctuary. When people leave out of a sanctuary, they ought to feel lighter, freer. They ought to experience God in a way that they can encounter him and know that he is real. Hallelujah. God, we want more of you. More of your word, more of your revelation, more of your love. And it's not that you're producing more of these things, God. We're just becoming more aware. More awareness of your presence, God. More awareness of your love, God, your favor, your grace, your mercy, God. We want more. More revelation knowledge, sensitivity to your spirit. We want more, God. We want to be more accountable for our decisions. Yeah. More responsible with the things that you have put in our possession. Yes. God, we want to be more. Yes. We want to hunger and thirst more for your word. Yes. Yes. God, we want more. More, God. How many of you want more? Oh, yeah. God, we thank you and we bless you. And we magnify you. You're holy and you're awesome. Everything that we have, everything that we are, everything that we do, God, it's for you. Yeah. Redirect our focus. Yeah. Redirect our passions. Yeah. Redirect our intentions, God, for more of you. Yeah. That we may live a life that you're pleased with. Yeah. That you may say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Yeah. That you may look upon us and smile. Yeah. That you may trust us, Lord God, with the hard things of life because you know we'll give you the glory. God, I thank you for these things in Jesus' name. Amen.